Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we are going to show you how to model loads and load combinations in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In the first part of this video, we're going to be focusing on modeling distributed member loads in RAM Elements. Now, member loads can have a variety of different configurations and directions to suit your project needs. We are now going to return our attention to our sample model. In the load conditions pop-up menu and the status bar at the bottom of your screen, you're first going to select your load case for which your uniform member load is going to be applicable. For this case, we're going to select the live load case. Next, we're going to navigate to the appropriate area in the data panel. To do that, we're going to select the members tab, followed by the loads on members icon. Now for this particular video, we're going to be starting by focusing on distributed forces and members. We're going to notice down here that there are several different member forces we have to choose from, and we're going to select the first icon for distributed loads. When we select this icon, we're going to notice that the active spreadsheet tools are going to become available to assist us in modeling our loads. We are now ready to start modeling our distributed loads. To do that, I'm going to select the member I want to apply the load to. Now for this model, I'm going to apply these loads to all of the beams at the first floor level. I'm going to select one of the beams and then go up to my selection tools in the spreadsheet, spreadsheet tab of the ribbon and select the by description icon. All of the floor beams in this model have already been assigned a dis common description, which will assist in your selection process. Once I do this, I'm going to go to my active spreadsheet tools and click on the icon for the towards negative y direction. This will be the tool you're going to use to model just a simple uniform distributed load. Now if you selected this tool and decide you want to select a different configuration, you can still do that by selecting from the different load types in the pull down menu. For this model, we're going to select the direction to be in the global negative y direction, which will be a downward acting force. You can also specify your loads according to the local axis system on members. Next, we're going to enter our load magnitude of 0.05 kips per foot. Now, since I've already specified this as being in the negative y direction, a negative sign on this load will not be required. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the OK button, and we can see that we've now modeled a distributed live load for all of the floor members. Let's now repeat this process for the roof members. Here, I'm going to start by selecting my active load condition, which for this exercise will be snow load. And then I'm going to select my roof members. Again, I can start by selecting one and then using the by description icon to select the rest. I'm going to repeat this process by clicking the towards negative Y icon. And I'm going to enter my load. Here I'm going to enter a 0.03 uniform load in the negative y direction. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see here that now I have a uniform snow load acting on the roof. The next type of member load we're going to apply is a trapezoidal member load. Now trapezoidal loads can be specified using the local axis of the member and the starting and ending nodes of the members. To get a better understanding about where the starting and ending nodes of the members are, we're going to go to the ribbon, click on the View tab, and select the Local Axis icon. What you're going to notice is that the Local 1 axis for all of the roof joints is currently pointing in the positive global Z axis direction. The Local 1 axis is created from the starting node to the ending node for each member. In this exercise, we're going to assume that there is a parapet at the edge of the roof on each side of the structure. To facilitate the process for modeling the trapezoidal snow drifting load, we're going to modify the direction of the local one axis for the joists at the south side of the structure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hold down the shift key and select those joists. Next, we're going to go to the Members tab and select the Connectivity and Description icon. 
When this icon is selected, we're going to notice that our active spreadsheet tools are going to become available, and we do have a tool to switch or invert your member direction. We'll go ahead and select that tool, and now what we're going to notice is that the direction of the local one axis is now pointing to the negative global Z axis direction. This is just one example for where you might want to use that tool in order to facilitate your modeling for a next step. Now at this point, we're ready to select the roof members. So we'll, again, we'll use our by description icon to select the rest of them. We're gonna ensure that our active load condition is still set to snow load. And then we're gonna go to the members tab followed by the loads on members icon. We're still working on distributed loads, so this first icon should still be selected. Once we've followed all of those steps, we're gonna go up to our active spreadsheet tools, and we're going to select the add a partial distributed load icon. Here you can enter it according to the global axis system. We're gonna enter ours according to the negative Y global axis. For here, we need to specify an initial value of load of 0.0. .0 three kips per foot and a final load magnitude for this one we're going to enter at zero kips per foot. Now for the distance field you can enter your initial distance and your final distance measured from your starting point of your load either in a percentage of load or in the current length units. My current length units are in feet so for this particular model I'm going to enter them in feet. For the first field, I'm going to enter zero, and it's going to automatically go to feet since I didn't put the percentage in there. And for the final area, I'm going to do eight feet. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the two options down here to add to existing load or replace existing load. For this particular model, we already went ahead and applied our flat roof snow load as a uniform distributed loads along each of the members. And we want this to be a drifting load that is basically acting in addition to that flat roof snow load. So the add to existing loads is going to be the option that we're going to want to use in this scenario. If we use the other option, replace existing loads, what this command will do is it will actually remove the distributed load that we already modeled and replace it with this one, which might be used in other scenarios but not quite appropriate for this exercise. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And now you can see that our loads have been added on. We have a uniform load, and then in addition to that, we also have a trapezoidal load. Next, we're also going to show you how to copy loads from one load case to another. Using the copy forces from another load case command, you can copy all the applied forces from a pre-existing load case to the current load case. This command could be especially useful when there are similar load cases or if you accidentally applied a load to the wrong load case. What we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and select all members. Then we're going to go down to our load conditions pop-up menu and select the dead load case. Here what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the home tab of the ribbon and we're going to find our load condition tools. Within here we're going to find this last tool to copy forces from another load case. Let's go ahead and click on this tool and what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of our live loads over to the dead load case. Once we select our copy load condition, we'll go ahead and click OK. Now you can see that the forces that we created on the live load cases all have been copied over to the dead load case. Now once they've been copied over, you can also choose to modify their loads. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these loads, select all of the members by description, and then if we go to our members tab, followed by our loads on members icon, and then we're going to choose our distributed loads. And here we can modify the properties. So we copied over the load from the live load case, which was 0.05 kips per foot for all of the currently selected members. What we're going to do is we're going to change the magnitude of that load to 0.02, which would be more appropriate for this model for dead load. Once we do that, we're going to change it for the first selected member. Then we're going to go up to the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon, 
And what we're going to find is this copy row at cursor location. This means that for every field at this cursor location, the currently selected member, it'll copy everything on down. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And now you can see that the loads have been updated to 0 0.02. So this could speed up your modeling process if you have loads for multiple different load cases and to, to get it in your model a little bit quicker. In the next part in this video, we're going to show you how to model concentrated member loads in RAM elements. When you are ready to model a concentrated member load, you're first going to start by selecting the current load condition that you want to model your loads according to. For this exercise, we're going to choose the live load group. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the appropriate location in the data panel. So here we're going to select the members tab followed by the loads on members icon. Within the loads on members categories, we have several different categories we can choose from. And for this model, we're going to select the concentrated loads item. After this is selected, then we're going to select the members we want to model the loads on. I'm going to go ahead and select one of the floor members and then select them all by using the by description icon within the selection tools. Once I do that, I'm going to go up to the Active Spreadsheet Tools available in the Spreadsheet tab of the ribbon and click on the Create icon. Here you can see I can create a load either from the distance from one end of the member, again referencing the starting end of the member, or a percentage of the distance. Let's go ahead and enter our load according to the global axis negative y direction. I'm going to enter a magnitude of load of 1 kip and I'm going to enter it from five feet from one end. Again, I'm going to choose the option to add to existing loads and then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now again, this type of load would be very important to understand which is the starting end and which is the ending end of your member. In addition to distributed forces and point forces on members, we can also add several different other options by selecting these different icons available in the data panel. You can see here we can also model temperature loads. We can model, model pressures to be applied on the top flanges of members. And we can also add axial loads to members. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.